Hi, my name is Fundile Kuka, known by the stage name Fura Threat. Uh, I wanna, I, I'm here to speak about my life. Yeah, from the beginning of my life, my music, and everything about Fura Threat. Uh, Fura Threat was born as Fundile Kuka. Uh, in the small town or in a small place close to Pisana town the name of that place is called Ndunge that is where I was born because I was born in rural areas not in the hospital yeah I grew up there at Ndunge yeah and I started attending my primary schools at the school called Gagalo JPS at Ndunge. Yeah, I did there my primary grade one, grade two, and grade three. And uh, it was in 1990s there, late 1990s, until early 2000, when uh, I left Gagalo JPS to continue with my grade 4, grade 5, grade 6, grade 7, and grade 9 at Ndunge JSS. Also in the same community, Ndunge. Uh, when I was in Gekselo and Ndunge, I was a soccer player at school. I was playing soccer. And also, when I was uh, at primary school, my favorite subject was Isikosa. And environment study and health education we we're doing that at Gezelo, environment study and health education and i was disappointed when i got into Ndunge, when i was told that you are not gonna be doing healthy education and environment study i was disappointed because when i was in Gezelo, i won the award of being good at environment study so it's and environment study was my favorite subject yeah, at Ndunge, it wasn't easy there because I was new. Obvious, I was having that fear, afraid, shy when I'm meeting with students, learners. It's a learners most. Yeah, I was shy, but um, I was also a soccer player there, playing for under 13 and above. Yeah, it's where... I was also introduced in music. I started music when I was at Ndunge, like around 2002, because I got at Ndunge in early 2000, but around 2002 is when I started to be introduced in music, writing my song in my room, rehearsing, doing all those things. Yeah, outside school, obviously, I was a soccer player. At school I was also a soccer player playing for the school yeah I was doing music like Kwaito because Kwaito was popular at that time but I was writing the, the songs in Isikosa and I was also trying to rap because there was also other guys who were loving rap at that time loving artists like ON Eminem the international artist so I was also involved a little bit in rap when I was starting my music career because I was influenced by local and American artists like Akon, yeah, or Eminem, or Justin Timberlake all those artists are the ones that I was loving yeah, I was doing it music uh, and doing it until 2006 yeah 2007 when I started listening to reggae music I fall in love with reggae music and uh, I started writing reggae songs listening to artists like uh, Bob Marley Peter Tosh and Barney Whaler. the Whalers it's the Whalers who makes me fall in love with reggae music and then I started changing the way I was writing a song into reggae music because I was also loving the 
the uh, Rasta, Rastafari leave it. Yeah, I fall in love with it because I grew up in the rural areas where we are practicing, practicing farming and I was also herding the cows of my father there in the forest. Yeah, so I fall in love with Rasta music and Rasta life because and it was talking about things that were happening in rural areas like how to plant how to do all those things and also remember i was also loving environment study when i was a kid and health education so all those things makes me think about living and healthy lifestyle yeah i found that rasta Rastafarian liberty influenced me to live that life and I started falling in love with it. Listening to artists like Bob Marley make me realize that, okay, I think I can survive. But it's something that I was feeling because when I was young, I was in loving eating meat, all those things. But after I listened to reggae and hearing about, oh, Rastas doesn't eat meat. Oh, I wanted to hear more and more and more so i hear that okay that if that life founds healthy fit with the way i feel as for a threat yeah around 2007 i was introduced in in music reggae and then i started uh, going around the city and the town not the city looking for people that I can do music with. But at that time, I didn't meet anyone. Yeah, I just continue rehearsing in my room when I got the time and also starting at school because in 2007, I left Dunge, JSS, to Ndugai, SSS. Yeah, it's when I was doing grade 10, grade 11 and grade 12 yeah there when i was young my dream was to be a soccer player or a musician or an actor because i was also doing acting at school i remember when i wrote uh, i wrote this, uh, a story that we were acting for art and culture because art and culture was also my lovely subject i was loving art and culture yeah how can I forget it? How can I forget it? Yeah, I was loving art and culture because I was good in art and culture. It, 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 it also gave me an influence to fall in love with music. Like we were told at school to build the guitars, to sing, to dance, all those things for the marks. So I was in love with art and culture. Yeah, but yeah. I wasn't good in making the instrument because sometimes we're asked to go home and build a guitar. I was just doing uh, just for marks. Sometimes we are told to go at home to, to do the folding chairs. Obviously, you just do operation and you just to get those marks. Yeah, so. That's my uh, story for school and music. So obviously when I got into high school, there was no drama subject. There was no music. It was just a subject like maths, physics, you have to choose there. But when I was on the line to register, uh, there was a teacher who was uh, doing the drama at school like getting the students to act for school for some festival at school so he's he saw the marks uh, my marks on the report of art and culture and he was he really loved the way i speak <laughs> the way i speak he he, he loved it and he called me on the side and told me that, okay, I'm going to put you on the acting because I love the way you speak and the way you do things. Like he picked me on the line 
he said uh, i'm gonna join the the drama at school the students who are doing drama it was him who was doing that practicing with students so he approached me and take me and put me onto the drama yeah i didn't enjoy doing the drama with him yeah because i was new i was also afraid at that school but i didn't enjoy doing drama i quit it while i was still in in grade 10 yeah i don't think i, I think i i did it january and february but i, I started to don't love it yeah i left it we are doing drama and debate the thing that made me left left him was the debate obvious i didn't like debate <laughs> yeah but the drama the acting i was loving it but yeah and yeah i we were doing that and then we, we, we started when he what do you mean? Bafor and it was angry little for the week. The week little for so Bafor. Oh, press the page, John. Yeah, we start, I started to leaving him. I didn't enjoy doing drama at school because of the debate. Yeah, and that time it was the time to focus, to choose what do you actually want in life. Do you want to be in acting or you want to be in have to choose one or you want to be focusing on studies like maths physics because once you choose maths physics and all those things like life science people will think of you need you are qualified to be an engineer and all of those things so i started to leave things like drama and focus on the on studying so i started to focus on my study because at that time i was also playing a soccer in the community since i was good in soccer but i started thinking okay it's time for me to leave soccer now and focus on my study so that after my trip i can go to university uh, but my dream to be a soccer player was still there but i have to take it out and then um, I did metric and I passed metric um, with a bachelor degree. And then uh, after metric, like I was late to apply at universities. So I was staying at home. And yeah, I was staying at home. Uh, it's when I started to focus more on my music. I was rehearsing, doing all those things uh, for my music. Uh, I bought the fake microphone yeah, that I was rehearsing with. And then uh, I started rehearsing, doing music, writing, because at that time I wasn't playing the guitar. I wasn't playing any instrument. I was just singing and writing the song. I met with uh, Jeroma. On 20, 2011, when we were in DAP, like having a DAP festival, I was invited to go there and I met the Rasta. So Jeroma was there with his instrument and I, I spoke with him because we were having the whole night to be on the DAP. We were doing it, I think it was uh, on 7, 7 January. Yeah. 2011, we were the Rastas were celebrating something like Christmas, Ethiopian Christmas. Yeah, I spoke with Jeremiah. I told him that, oh, Jeremiah, I need someone to work with. 
I'm a musician. I can sing. I'm a singer. I'm a songwriter. So I spoke with Jerome. Jerome said, uh, there is no problem. We can begin working, doing music, all that. He also loved <coughs> reggae music. He also loved music. He would like to work with me. So we spoke. We took numbers from each other. And then uh, he left because Jerome is a teacher. So he was living at, uh, he's, he's teaching at other place called Paul St. John's. Yeah, so he left on January because the school were open. I was left alone again. I started to write songs again, rehearse again, because I didn't have a time to go with him and practice the songs. So that's how 2011 gone, because I was also, 2011, there was no changes my music i was still doing the same thing uh, until i met with jerome again on 2012 when i was from uh, limbombo because i left to stay at limbombo for six months when i come back i met with jerome again then we started doing the songs i think we we did three songs with jerome i was singing he was playing the instrument keyboard and the guitar i did my first song uh, but i didn't record it but my first song i did with jerome was called give me the light give me the light give me the light give me the light cha give me the light give me the light give me the light cha light cha give me the light cha it was one of those songs i enjoyed doing it but i didn't go to studio to record it because obviously I was staying in the rural areas there are no studio there and I didn't wanna record on the computers because um, my dream was to go into the professional studio and record my music yeah so on 2012 we, we did three songs and then uh, I left to university obviously he was also teaching we didn't do more works on, on, on 2012 like the last time we, we, we met, we did those three songs. It was around uh, May. Uh, yeah. And then I left to university. We didn't meet again on 2012. 2013, we haven't done music at all because uh, I was going to focus on music. But it was 2013 was the bad year ever in my life because uh, the first I was at university the first six months uh, the second six months I was sick at university yeah I was very sick and thanks that I didn't die but I was very sick like my life was was very bad like I wake up in the hospital yeah there is a hospital, I, I, I'm not sure about this name, it's Ed, Eddington Hospital. Yeah, I found myself there, but I survived. So I haven't done music at, at all on 2013. On 2014, it, oh, on 2012, I forgot to mention that when I was in university, I bought my first guitar on 2012. Yeah, but I didn't learn how to play it. Jerome was still playing instrument for me but on 2014 i bought uh, the second guitar that the one that i was i learned how to play the guitar on it and then i started to redo my songs to redo my songs without using thinking of what jeroma did for this song what what instrument he used i i decided to restart my music i put my own instrument guitar yeah on 20 it was on 2014 yeah 2014 then uh, on 2015 i think on 2014 i did uh, a lot of songs because it was easy for me i was writing the song i was singing not like living at home because when i was staying in eastern cape i have to to move from rural area to the town and I was 
walking because that place uh, is, is like far on the city I was walking so the time I bought guitar the year I bought my guitar is when things became easy I was rehearsing in my room everything I wanted I was doing it yeah on 2015 I did a lot in music yeah because uh, on 2014 to buy the instrument like when I was in university I got a sponsorship that sponsored with me with uh, 10,000 10, rand yeah that 10,000 rand I took it and I bought the instrument the guitars and everything that I know that I will need in music yeah and uh, on this was on 2014 and I kept some of the money, yeah, because I was thinking, okay, I want to go and, and record my music. Obvious, when you are students, you are not employed, you don't have money. So I kept some of the money to record my first song. On 2015, I didn't use that money a lot because I was aiming to do a music, a song, to go to studio. Yeah, and then... Uh, um, on 2015 it was my last year i finished up with school uh, university and then on 2016 i was back at home in eastern cape it's when I, I i started to focus more on music rehearsing and picking up the song which song i wanna record first because i was having so many many songs yeah and then i decided later on 2016 that okay i want to record my first single smoking yeah because i was loving that song i picked it up on 2016 i was supposed to record that song on 2016 but it didn't happen because i i was speaking with a um, record producer colin but we didn't get a time yeah because i wasn't knowing any studio but i spoke with colin and then um, we were arranging but we ended up not meeting until early 2017 spoke with colin earlier january that on february i wanna come and do song i started rehearsing smoking again over and over and over then i went to studio i called colin colin said okay you can come obviously i uh, i travel from eastern cape to Deben at sonic studio i found colin there we met i introduced myself to him and asked him and and he asked me what we, what what i'm going to do today and i told him that okay i'm going to be recording my song what's the name of the song i called i told him smoking okay he said okay how many hours okay i told him he said i must book three hours he said it, it, it took three hours to to record the song okay i paid him for three hours he told me the charges we started getting studio it was my first time getting in studio to record my song yeah i was nervous <laughs> yeah but we work very well like at studio i was thinking like i'm gonna hearing the the, the drum i was asking myself who's gonna be playing drum who's gonna be playing keyboard i was thinking that they, they are there is a group of the band that uh, play instrument the time you are recording but Colin just pick up uh, something small I don't know what's the name of it it's where he was putting the drum on it the keyboard is only keyboard and the guitar that he play by his hands beat drums drum he mix it yeah so smoking went very well uh, I was enjoying it while we were at studio and I did know that okay I this song is gonna be big because I enjoy it and Colin I see I saw him dancing like I was worried like what if people are not gonna love this song but the time I saw him dancing for the song like yeah I started to think okay this song is, is very nice Jesus uh, hi, let's go. Yeah, yeah go for it and um, after i recorded smoking i started promoting it back in rural areas because i recorded it there and then i went back to eastern cape 
I met with the community radio station and I told them, this is my song. They took it and they play it on the radio station. I think the first radio station to play my song was Lukanji FM. That's the first time uh, my song was played on air. And I was celebrating. Although I didn't hear, did, I wasn't listening to the radio station, but I was happy because I was told that, okay, your song was played on Friday last week, last, 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 last week. We still gonna play it. I was celebrating. And then uh, I spoke with Inconjani FM. I submitted the song. It's when I started to hear my song on air when I was having an interview there. Also, I didn't listen to the song. Like I was on I was on on the phone. I hear uh, Sister V saying, Okay, now after the airplay of, of hard of smoking, I'm gonna speak with Furat Red. Furat Red, how are you? The song was playing a little bit on background. Yeah, it's when I started to hear my song, like I was celebrating. Yeah, my song is on the radio now. For the first time, yeah, at least I'm getting somewhere. And then um, I was in the, invited for the Mtata Express newspaper. They spoke with me, they interviewed me, they profiled me. Yeah, that's also the second time I got into the media a newspaper, Mtata Express newspaper, and I was celebrating also because... I was like, yeah, I'm getting there now. I was on the on in studio on February now. I'm on radio stations and now I'm on the newspaper. Yeah. And then I started promoting my music. And then I started getting the fans like uh from Africa, Nigeria, Uganda, Zambia, who were telling me that they did love my song. And I was very happy about that. I was so excited. And then I started uh, uh, getting into the international, but it was around, it was not on the first six months to get international. I think it was in the second months, around September or August. Yeah, it was those time when I was invited uh, by the, um, I spoke with, um, the street money magazine owner i got an interview there and i was told that okay the interview is gonna be sold and i was also celebrating again because uh, it was all my first time getting on the magazine like something now is on sale magazine was on sale in us like i got the breakthrough in usa so my music started to be played there and I was pushing, pushing. Uh, obviously, I got to many radio stations in the US, in the United States of America, in many radio stations there, and also in England. Yeah, England is, 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 is the second place where I got my music played there on the radio, the breakthrough. And I also I was also featured on the Soul Central magazine in England. So that was another breakthrough in, in, in England in in United Kingdom. So in all those countries, yeah. All other countries started to getting my music, both Europe and Asia, Africa, <clears throat> not South America. Yeah, Australia. Yeah, until and then on. I was there was a gap here for me on 20, 20, 2018. I didn't record any song there because I was still promoting uh, my first single, Smoking, and it was hard because after I recorded Smoking, remember I kept the money. The money was starting to be gone now because I went to studio and I was promoting traveling then then there the money was was <laughs> uh, was ending 
Um, I started a, a small business in order to get money because there was no one I can ask him to, to give me the money. I started a small business selling, selling biscuit ships. Yeah, it's when I was collecting a little money to go to the internet cafe to promote my music. Yeah, and then uh, this was on 2018. Yeah, and then on 2019, um, since I, I was having a dream of acting, getting into the film industry, so on 2019, uh, I, I left Eastern Cape to study the film from Eastern Cape. So I got a sponsorship from uh, Eastern Cape um, uh, organization that is also connected with uh, art and culture. So they told me that they're going to pay my fees and all those things. I, I, must choose the, uh, I must choose the school. I was already applied it after. So I told them that, okay, I'm going to go to Deben. And also the thing I did like about Deben because I was thinking of going to Joburg, but I decided to choose Deben since I'm also doing music. My producer obviously is in Deben. I want to record many songs there. Yeah, I chose Deben and earlier, after I left Eastern Cape to to to, to the film school in Deben, I recorded my second single was I Was a Prisoner. Yeah, that 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 song speak about my life. Yeah, uh, as a, growing up uh, as a prisoner. But I, I don't wanna talk about that now. Yeah, but that 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 song speak about my life, and the people did love it. I was getting interviews in local radio station, Joburg, Cape Town. Yeah, the song go goes internationally, getting more love uh, from the fans. Yeah, I think I was a prisoner. Did very well. Yeah, I got. I was getting in in, in the newspapers again and radio station interviews uh, until on twenty on twenty twenty. Earlier 2020, I recorded my song, uh, People Must Stop, People Must Stop Abusing Other People. Yeah, that song, people did love it a lot. Yeah, because it talk about uh, gender-based violence, a any violence that it's, it's done to the people. So it telling the people to stop abusing other people. Yeah, that song was called People Must Stop. All my music were obviously loved by the international radio station and audience. So there was a th it was thousand radio stations all over the world who was playing my song. Obviously, after after I I, I did people must stop uh, on on January, then February, March, April, May, June. I recorded my last single, Heart Smart. I, that song was the greatest hit ever in my catalog because Heart Smart, it was the first time I was hearing about my song that has topped the chart, topped the chart for a week. That song became the number one in, 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 in six times in different radio stations. Top song, six times for a week. I think in Bel it was first in Belgium. I told that the song... It's gonna be played each and every hour so 24 hours so the song was played 24 24 times a day each hour each hour each hour making a uh, 190 huh three three hundred and something a place for that week yeah it was in Belgium radio station obviously many radio station followed until uh, there were six it was in Belgium, England, USA, um, in Belgium again, England again, twice in England, in Belgium, twice in US, and then in Austria. Yeah, the last one was in Austria. Yeah, that song went very well. It was becoming the heat of the day, the heat of the week. Many radio stations, thousands of radio stations who were playing that song until now that song Heart Smart was still big the whole 2020 and 2021 
getting in many countries like Italy. And I was also getting the 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 shows that are special special dedicated for me in uh, in Australia because my song was getting more support in Australia by Australian radio stations. So yeah, that song went very well. This was 20, 2020 and 2021 in Spain, like all over the world, Russia, everywhere, everywhere in all seven continents. Yeah, that's my story about my music. So I took the break uh, at um, on, on 2021 in music, in 2020. Yeah, I decided to take a break in music and I started um, focusing on my studies. Yeah, but it was not, to, to focus on my study was not the reason of um, taking a break in music. But I decided to take a break in music for some reasons. Yeah, for some reason there are so many of them, but I, I can't talk about them now. But yeah, I took the break and then I started to to look after myself because yeah, I was always busy with music. I had to promote myself, all those things. I started to get some rest, some fresh air after I took the break in music. Yeah, I started like having more time enjoying myself. Yeah, mm, it was this was 2021, but I didn't stop uh, promoting my music. Obviously, I was invited by the radio stations, by the magazines, getting the interview. Like, it wasn't like I took the break in music, like I just throw away everything. No, I was in music. I was busy with interviews, uh, with newspapers, radio station, getting some tributes. I think in earlier 2021, I got an interview by Sabella FM. Many of them. Um, I got my last tribute when I was celebrating Ifura Day on September 2021. Yeah, I think my last interview was with, uh, it's available here on YouTube. It's available. Uh, it's um, with Ray to Sunny South. I think it's my last interview. Yeah, I started focusing on some of other things. And one of, of, of the things was to spend my money, the money I have in some of other things. Like I decided, okay, since I took the break in music, I don't know when I'm going to come back in music because I'm still going to have to focus in the film industry getting into film but since I also love playing football because football was a part of my life yeah I decided that okay I wanna reform my teams because when I was young I used to make teams my own teams so until uh, 2016 I was running my team but when I left Eastern Cape the team ended yeah I decided to reform it yeah these are the things i was focusing when i'm taking a break but more especially is to focus on film get to know what is happening in the film industry because i'm gonna be on the film industry yeah so my dream right now it's 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 uh today it's uh october 26 26 or 27 <laughs> 26 yeah it's where my music my life is my focus right now is to get into the film industry and do very well like i did in music so i'm not gonna leave music i'm gonna do both of them but i'm gonna specializing in the film so obviously i'm gonna work in eastern cape because when i was sponsored i was told that okay you have to work in eastern cape after your graduation so I'm gonna go to work in Eastern Cape film industry. I will also be doing music. Yeah, also involved in the sport. Yeah, because I uh, I also want to form my team and own it. It's also, it's it, it's what I'm gonna be doing. Many things that are still gonna follow. But I enjoyed my music career. I will never stop doing music. 
I call my music Fura music because it's the difference, the different style of music. It's like reggae music, but not like roots, not the reggae that people know. It's different. So I enjoy doing my music, Fura music. I call it Fura music. Yeah, spreading Fura love. Yeah, I will continue doing my music and until infinite. <laughs> Yeah, my aim now is to get into acting and focus on film industry. This is my story, 2021 of Fura Dread. Yeah, Fura Love. Hope you're gonna watch and enjoy my interview, my story, and got inspired, especially the people who grow up in rural areas. I think they're gonna love it. Yeah, because I'm not a city guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cut. Thank you.